So excited to have you back for our post-Christmas cleanup and my nine non-negotiables to help you ditch the overwhelm of homeschool mom life. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas, guys. We did it. (laughs) How many of you feel like, holy moly, I can check that off my list. I know that's not the best way to look at it. We love the holidays around here. Um, But it's a lot, right? Moms, you can attest that it is a lot. And kind of having it under your belt and starting to clean up after afterwards can feel really really good so i need to know in the comments how many of you have taken your christmas tree down already and how many of you like to ride it out i personally have a birthday on january 10th so i typically like to ride it out until january but my daughter has a birthday a few days before that and we're gonna start i think trying to wrap up christmas before her birthday that way her birthday feels special and you know later on if she wants to choose to have christmas up during her birthday that's fine too anyway i am on my holiday cleanup this is (laughs) our mess from having two families at our house my family of six just absolutely wrecks the house and then everyone wants to break into all their toys and all their activities i'm putting away evie's little face mask decorating activity here and her karaoke machine and all the little desserts and snacks and breads that we made kind of just getting things rained in and cleaning off the island. I don't know about you, but I am someone who, when the island is clean, my whole house feels clean. I had multiple of you ask about why we moved to the country, and I wanted to answer that question because I love this question. It's very much multifaceted. One of the main reasons that we moved here, first of all, back up a little bit, we had been looking around for probably six to nine months. Uh, We were living in a one acre house and we were making the best of the one acre of land that we had. I mean, you can do a lot on one acre. So this is my encouragement to you. If you have one acre, you can really do a lot as far as homesteading goes. But for us, we were looking for more space. We were a little close to the city for our taste and we wanted to just get out, have more space. And so we had been looking for about nine months and then we got a letter in the mail from the township telling us that we could not have our chickens. And we had already asked permission. We had already done all the things we needed to do to make sure that we could have those chickens. And then all of a sudden we got this video this letter so we got this letter sorry i'm outside with my kids we're looking for where our chickens are laying their eggs they have been hiding their eggs so we're on an egg hunt so we got this letter from the township that basically said hey you cannot have your chickens and you either need to get rid of them or you need to move and you have five days to do it we were like oh cool oh guys look at the deer oh my gosh that was so cool we just saw we were walking along the tree line and four was that four or five deer one two three four deer just ran out of the tree line that was so cool my gosh they're so cute and they were very close they must have been just waiting us out thinking we weren't going to (laughs) thinking we weren't going to come any closer so back to my story this is very Uh, discombobulated story here (laughs) so we got a letter they said you have five days and we were like oh great cool five days to either move our whole family or get rid of our chickens which we are not gonna do this is the lifestyle that we want this is the lifestyle we built this is the direction we were going and we were kind of just like you know what no 
maybe this is we've been praying for the perfect time to get out of here we've been praying for the perfect place to pop up praying for the perfect piece of land the perfect home and so we just said this is god talking to us telling us listen you gotta go now's the time this is your kick in the pants because we were very comfortable you know it was not something that we needed 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 to move and have land so we were kind of just you know comfortable and making the most of that one acre so we finally decided this is what god wants us to do so let's start looking so we started actively looking, looking for something that had more than five acres. That was our minimum. And I have four kids, so the house had to have at least four bedrooms. That was our absolute minimum. And started to find a couple places, started to go tour some places. I'm sure our realtor got so annoyed, but honestly, we I have some realtor friends and they're like telling me how they've shown people 30 and 40 houses. That was not us. We were not that bad. We saw probably, I don't know, maybe five houses before we decided on the house that we ended up in. And we are beyond thrilled with the house that we found. We chose a house that has almost nine acres. It has a 1800s farmhouse on it, but it has been somewhat updated, I would say. It's funny because when you talk about updates, either the person did a good job or they did a bad job. And I would say our person did an okay job. There are some spots like the kitchen where he totally fudged it. Like we just are going to replace the countertops because he put in some like weird plywood <laughs> plywood based countertop and the guy came out to measure for them and he was like hmm and, like looking at the wall and I was like what what are you looking at and he was like this wall is literally so crooked he was like did you do this yourself I'm like no I'm not that dumb I mean I would at least hire someone to do the things I know I can't do <laughs> I was like, and that's why you're here doing my countertops because I don't know how to do that. So anyway, he uh, he got a, a kick out of that. The wall is like super crooked and the cabinets are not level and all kinds of stuff. So we're kind of like fixing the things that the previous owner did very poorly and leaving the things that he did an okay job on and just working off of them for example the cabinets that he chose are fine they're not great as you can see they're like i don't even know like a tannish taupey green it's not a great color it's not like one of those pretty trendy green colors that you're like oh my gosh this is so cute no it's a weird color but the plan is to paint them white, to have them painted white, and then go from there. So there's good natural light in there, but not a ton. In our other house, if you've watched any of our old videos, I had two massive skylights in my kitchen, and that gave me so much light in my house and so much light in the kitchen which was an open concept. And this one is a little bit less of an open concept. It's a little bit more segmented because just the nature of a farmhouse is a little bit less open concept. So, which I'm totally fine with. Obviously I knew that when we purchased the house. So anyway, we are doing some things in the house and renovating a couple things, just like minor renovations. Nothing is gonna be a full gut job. What we're really focusing on is the outdoors. And back to my story, that was like a little tangent. <laughs> so we were basically told you have to leave or, or get rid of your chickens, which we weren't gonna do. Even though like our neighbors super love our chickens, even now we talk to them. We moved, how many months ago now? Four months ago now. 
three months ago and our neighbors we see them all the time and they're like oh my gosh we miss you guys we miss the chickens they were so much fun we wish you guys could come back and all the stuff so we are renting that house out so maybe one day down the road we would live in that house it's a ranch which we really like I personally just told my husband like two or three days ago I was like I think I'm a ranch person (laughs) I don't love climbing up these steps all the time and like we're trying to watch tv downstairs and eat dinner downstairs after the kids while the kids are going to bed and you know how kids are can you check on me can you check on me can you check on me so we're checking on them like 10, 15, 20 times, you know, tucking them in, rubbing their back, singing to them, all the things. And my legs are getting sore. Am I that out of shape? (laughs) Okay. They're not actually getting sore, but it is tiring. It's exhausting. And it makes you almost dread going up there, which is not really super fun. So definitely some pros and cons to this house. I never did share a full interior video but if you guys are interested in a full interior video let me know in the comments and i will make sure i get that done for you we have almost decorated every room and have them set sort of how we want them as you know if you have moved which most people have then you know that it doesn't really it's not really what you 100 percent want it to be right away and it kind of evolves and takes time to to get each piece of furniture exactly where you want it and you try this rug and then you try that rug and then you try this piece of art and all that all that sort of stuff so we're kind of in that phase we are more on the settled end of that phase we did talk about doing something in our bedroom a little bit more moody because right now all the walls in like the whole house when we moved in were gray and don't necessarily hate gray but also don't love gray I much prefer a white crisp foundation and then go from there so we did paint two of the main living spaces in the main floor which I think totally changed it it totally changed the vibe in there from the gray to the white it just feels so much more modern and updated And then we put a big white sectional couch in there, which felt so good. So all that to say, we are super, super happy in this house right now. So I've been working hard to clean the house up, get things organized, kind of do some decluttering. I did do some decluttering before Christmas, but you know, after everything comes in the house, you kind of feel a little bit overwhelmed and feel like you need to purge a few more items. Yeah, that's me right now. The kids got some great activities that we can apply to homeschool stuff, um, some great hand-eye coordination, some great puzzles. They got a um, wood loom as well, which I think is going to be really great for Evie. Okay, now on to what you all came here for. The nine simple habits that I promised to myself to keep that helped me stay not overwhelmed as a homeschool mom of four. The first non-negotiable is to have a schedule and keep it, period. This is something that I've implemented fairly recently, and it has been night and day, the attitude that the kids have. I'm not sure if it's just my kids, but I'm pretty sure that most kids thrive when they have routine. So this is something that I've started implementing in our day-to-day life. I can share that routine with you if you're interested. Just leave a little comment down below and I'll make sure that I share that day-to-day routine with you. This is one of the non-negotiables. I have it up on the wall. I have it saved on my phone. The kids know for a fact that in the morning, I'm gonna spend 30 minutes drinking my coffee, not being bothered, not doing an activity, not doing school, and then we're gonna jump right into something that they wanna do. So they know that that's coming. The next one is to schedule a weekly play date. As a homeschool mom, I need to make sure that I get socialized and the kids get socialized. We just need it for our health. So we make sure that we have a weekly play date with one of our other homeschool family friends. 
Something I started doing recently that has saved my tush in the mornings because I have to milk the cow every single morning is making the kids breakfast beforehand. So I will always try to make a little breakfast box that either doesn't need refrigerated or it can go in the fridge. Each of them has a little almost bento box style breakfast that they're able to pull and eat. So I'll be honest, I've only done this I only do this probably two days a week because it does get a little bit overwhelming and sometimes I wanna make fresh pancakes or something like that for them that can't exactly go into a bento box. The next thing is have activities ready. As hard as it sounds to in the evening once they've gone to bed, plan more activities, that's going to save you. So I actually do get my 30 minutes of peace and quiet to drink my coffee, to just hang out with the baby and they can do their little independent activity. That's one of the reasons we ask for independent activities for Christmas a lot. And we gift those things a lot because what parent doesn't want something that their kid can do by themselves for a few minutes. And this brings me to number six, always have an activity ready for when you're going to try to school one of the kids. So when you actually wanna sit down, do workbook work, do learning, do reading, any of those things, all the other kids are gonna need something to do. So unless you wanna turn the TV on, which I'm not shaming, cause I have done it before, it's really helpful to have an activity planned for the other kids. Another one of our non-negotiables, which is number eight, is to get outside every single day, guys, every single day, even when it's freezing out. As you know, Evie goes to a forest school and they literally have class every single day, rain or shine, snow, sleet. I don't know if they're, what are they, postmen? <laughs> so my husband said to me, they're going to do it, rain, sleet or shine. I said, yeah, they go to school no matter what the weather and it's an outdoor school so they just dress appropriately and they have a fire if it's if it's cold out they have a little cabin that they can go to in super inclement weather um, but it's really really crucial to our mental health to get outside every single day get some vitamin d get that fresh air let the kids run around in nature it's just really important for us Number eight is get a child to help with almost every single thing you do. This is a much easier said than done, okay? <laughs> this is not something that didn't come with practice. Um, you can easily load the dishes much quicker. You could easily cook breakfast much quicker. You could easily vacuum much quicker, but they love to learn that responsibility and they love to help. They really do. I now have multiple of them requesting to help. And then it gives you that little bit of extra special time. So for example, maybe someone feels like they need a little bit of extra mommy time that day. So they'll volunteer to help me cook breakfast or help me vacuum or help me clean up. And then we'll make it fun. We'll turn it into a dance party or have a competition of who can pick up the most Legos or something. And last but not least, number nine, which should be the easiest one, but is actually the hardest one for me, is to actually make myself a priority. Actually take time for myself, do something I'm passionate about, check something off my to-do list, have a cup of tea with myself. This has been one of the hardest ones to implement. All you moms totally understand, but it has been one of the most beneficial, most important to me. If you found these tips super helpful, I would love to have you subscribe and comment and join me along on this journey.